it's time for another IEM review. I know, most of you want more headphone reviews. I see that from the number of people who watch IEM videos versus those who watch my headphone videos. I get it, you're not into this silly speaker inside your ear thing. But I think IEMs are fairly interesting. You can spend thousands of dollars on a single IEM, find IEMs with one driver or a dozen, run into IEMs that look very similar to a pair sold by another company, and ultimately be confused with all the incessant releases, purported upgrades, and contradictory hype. So really, if you think about it, IEMs are not that different from headphones. Today, we take a look at the BGVP DN3, a $75 IEM. Hi-Fi Go sent me this product to review. If you're not aware, Hi-Fi Go is one of a few online resellers that curates Chi-Fi products of all sorts from the entire budget spectrum. Take a look at their stuff if you get a chance, and you might find something fascinating. Is the DN3 a product worth considering, or a rehash of Chi-Fi IEMs we have already seen time and time again? The DN3 is a dual driver IEM. It has one dynamic driver and a balanced armature driver. This is BGVP's third iteration of the DN series, obviously. The marketing says that the DN3 will provide high quality performance in the mid and high frequencies. Evidently, this IEM is, quote, tuned specifically for a thunderous lower end with deep punch, mid bass slam, and powerful sub bass rumble. Moreover, the DN3 is supposed to render rich mids and smooth high frequencies. As always with IEMs, we have no clear idea what the DN3 is supposed to do. We have one concrete promise, that the DN3 will provide powerful bass. Frankly, the vague descriptions of this product suggest a very V-shaped signature. Let's find out if that is the case. The DN3 is robust. It's made of aluminum. There is a grill on the outer shell, but this is not an open back IEM. That grill is just for looks. The DN3 has no sharp edges. While the front of the shell looks like a triangle, the IEM is indeed contoured to sit inside the ear. The DN3 comes with a multitude of ear tips. You get six different sets of silicone ear tips and one set of phone ear tips. The silicone ear tips come in two varieties, either for vocal tuning or for bass tuning. There are slight differences between these types of ear tips. All the ear tips seem well made and I cannot find anything at fault with their construction. The DN3 comes with an MMCX cable. You can select between standard 3.5mm or balanced 2.5mm or 4.4mm terminations when you buy the DN3. The cable is rather eh, utilitarian. It has a rubber coating and the cable tends to develop kinks. It also transmits some microphonics. As for comfort, I found that the DN3 was of average comfort. In my opinion, the Final Audio B2 and Moondrop Aria are comfortable IEMs. I would place the DN3 along with them in this category. I can wear the DN3 without much concern for about 2-3 to three hours, though after that, my ears do become a little bit sore. Overall. The DN3 has good build and mostly good accessories. It's not often that you see such a variety of ear tips for an IEM under $100, but the stock cable needs a little bit of work. While it is perfectly usable and sturdy, it also tends to tangle easily. The DN3, I think, is a fairly comfortable IEM. To test the sound signature of the DN3, I used it with various devices. This includes my Modi and Liquid Spark stack, the RME ADI2 DAC, and the iFi Neo IDSD. I also tested it with my Sony NWZX507. I use the stock ear tips and cable. I also use the stock Tin T2 cable. I listened to my test playlist on Amazon Music HD. The DN3 is very easy to drive. It is sensitive and you won't need an amplifier. But if you choose to use an amplifier, as with all IEMs, a modestly powerful one will be plenty. Before we start discussing the sound signature, we should briefly talk about the various ear tips included with the DN3. There are three variants, a memory foam set of ear tips and two silicone versions, one for vocals and the other for bass. It's really hard, in fact downright impractical, to talk about specific differences between ear tips when you've got just one IEM to work with but my general impressions are the following. 
The bass ear tips appear to add emphasis in sub bass. Transients is a little slower with the bass ear tips. The bass ear tips also appear to slightly emphasize the mid bass when compared to the vocal ear tips. Separation of sub bass from mid bass is a little bit more obvious with the vocal ear tips. The vocal ear tips made vocals a little airier and emphasized siblings marginally more than the bass ear tips. Vocal grain is also more obvious with the vocal ear tips. The bass ear tips, in contrast, provide a more intimate presentation of mids. There doesn't seem to be much difference in treble energy between the vocal and bass ear tips. The vocal ear tips tend to provide greater separation of instruments. The bass ear tips present treble instruments a little closer to the ears. The vocal ear tips provide a wider soundstage and help render a little bit more detail and clarity. The memory foam ear tips add a different experience. They have greater sub bass presence than the vocal ear tips, but not as much as the bass ear tips. Both silicone ear tips are clearer than the phone ear tips in rendering the bass, and the silicone tips have greater separation of sub bass from mid bass. Mid bass slam, however, is similar between the foam and bass ear tips. The memory phone ear tips provide less vocal sibilance than both of the silicone ear tips. Vocals sound a little smoother with less grain on the foam ear tips. Separation of mid centric instruments is greater with the silicone ear tips. Treble is slightly reduced with the foam ear tips. Both silicone ear tips provide more energy, particularly in the mid to upper treble region, when compared to the memory foam tips. Separation and clarity in the treble region is greater on the silicone tips. Soundstage is greater overall with the vocal ear tips. The bass ear tip is slightly wider in soundstage than the memory foam tip. Detail separation and clarity is most obvious on the vocal ear tips, while the memory foam ear tips are the least in all these respects. So essentially, you have the option of getting three different experiences depending on the ear tips you use. There is no right or wrong answer, and of course, you can buy alternative ear tips if you want. For my sound signature tests, I decide to use the bass ear tips as that appears to be the middle ground between the three options. BGVP says that the DN3 has powerful bass. In my experience, using the bass ear tips, it appears that the DN3 has elevated bass response. In Mountains by Hans Zimmer, the DN3 clearly rendered the sub bass rumble from the beginning of the track. Transient seems to be about average, no more and no less than what I heard with the Moondrop Aria and Moondrop Quark. When the crescendo hit, the organ cut through the mix. The rolling thunder effect was audible, but not overbearing. All instruments seemed to meld, but that did not result in muddiness or distortion. When the vocals chimed in, they rose from the background until they were about shoulder to shoulder with the instruments. In Conquered by Overwork, there's a rolling marble effect at the beginning. This is supposed to pan from right to left to center. The DN3 did recreate the sound of rolling marbles and some of the panning. There are multiple drums in this track and all of them appear clearly on the DN3. Mid bass slam was hard but not sharp. It was evident that mid bass is pushed forward above sub bass. While I could hear all the drums, each drum strike did meld with each subsequent one. I listened to several hip hop songs including Pure Water, New Patek, Reel It In, and Uproar. On each occasion, the DN3 presented the sub bass clearly. It was obviously a little bit elevated. The DN3 made it sound like the subwoofer was 10 feet away from me. Nevertheless, drum strikes were easily audible and cut through the sub bass. Vocals were two steps ahead of the instruments. I next tested the DN3 on my Sicario playlist. These tracks have a lot of bass emphasis. I use these songs to listen for any audible bass distortion. The DN3 never distorted, even at excessively high volumes. Overall, when BGVP says that the DN3 has powerful bass, what they probably mean is that the DN3 has elevated bass, and I think that is true. Sub bass and mid bass both get an emphasis, but mid bass is more push forward. There is no distortion or muddiness. Keep in mind, I use the bass ear tips. I already discussed the general differences among the ear tips in a previous section. BGVP says that the DN3 has rich mids. I have no idea what that means. Using the bass ear tips, it seemed to me that the mids are forward and slightly sibilant. In Orla Gartland's song Why Am I Like This, there's natural vocal grain and sibilance in the track. The DN3 provided a fairly smooth, neutral rendition of the grain. The sibilance was marginally accentuated, however. It was similar to what I typically hear with the Allo Audio S4X. Orla's voice was clear and distinct, easily one to two steps ahead of the instruments. The drums were clearly a little louder than the other instruments, 
but did not drown them out. All mid-centric instruments tended to meld together, but they did not sound muddy or veiled. In Watch It Back by Haim, the DN3 again showed that it slightly accentuates female siblings. This was a far cry from what the HD560S does, and similar to the Allo S4X's presentation. At 8 seconds into the song, the primary vocalist says the word, we, and drags it out, making it sound gravelly. The DN3 rendered this detail. There are two backup vocalists, and the DN3 presented both of them clearly at first. When the instruments played at maximum, those backup vocalists melded, but upon close attention, I could still pick their voices apart. The drums were a little louder than the other instruments. All instruments tended to meld their notes together, but none sounded veiled or distant. The vocals were about one to two steps ahead of the instruments. In Superposition by Young the Giant, the DN3 correctly rendered the tonalities of the ukulele, drums, and bass. Both the drum and bass seem to be a little emphasized compared to more neutral headphones. The primary male vocalist sounded smooth. His sibilance was neutral and not emphasized. There's a backup vocalist in this track whose voice is layered beneath the primaries. The DN3 was not able to separate the two voices, but that is typical of a lot of headphones and IEMs. Between 1 minute and 10 and 1 minute and 20 seconds, there are supposed to be sharp intakes of breaths. The DN3 rendered this detail without difficulty. Overall, using the bass ear tips, the DN3 has mildly forward mids, but close to neutral, I think. There's a slight emphasis in female siblings, but none as far as I can tell with male vocals. All instruments tend to meld, but never sound muddy. Vocals and instruments have an intimate presentation, close to the ears. BGVP says that the DN3 has smooth highs. I'm not sure what that's supposed to convey. But in my experience, the DN3's treble seems to be close to neutral with perhaps a slight roll-off in the upper treble region. This was with the bass ear tips. In Skirt So for X-Wings, the DN3 rendered the brass and horns clearly. Their nasally signatures came through the other instruments. However, it seemed like the higher pitch notes were slightly underemphasized, not quite as sharp as they were on the Avantone Planar, the Allo Audio S4X, and the Moondrop Quarks. All instruments tended to meld their notes together, resulting in average clarity. The timphani was slightly emphasized, but it did not overwhelm the other elements. The DN3 provides a stereo left and right presentation, so don't expect a 3D rendition. In Flight from the City, the DN3 made the piano sound like it was about 5 feet away. The bass or notes were slightly emphasized, but did not distort. I could hear the electric buzzing and pops and sizzles, details that are at the bottom layer of this song. However, these details were a little recessed and not consistently clear. The cello sounded clear and smooth, but it was a little recessed compared to the piano's bassy notes. I could just about hear the creaking of wood on the pianist's bench and the shifting of the cello's weight. In take 5 of the Dave Brubeck Quartet, the DN3 presented the piano in the right, the drums in the left, saxophone center, and the bass one step behind. The saxophone was distinct and clear, but it did appear that some of its energy in the higher notes was slightly missing. The symbols are struck at different portions in this song and should convey a slightly varied tonality each time they are struck. The DN3 did provide some of this variation. The symbols were as loud as the saxophone and the piano was a step behind both of these instruments. Overall, when BGVP says that the highs are smooth, I take it to mean that the treble is close to neutral with a marginal roll-off at the higher end. Of course, this was with the bass ear tips. Alternative ear tips will have a slightly different presentation. Nevertheless, the DN3 was easy to listen to even at excessive volumes. I think it's safe to say that the DN3 is not winning any awards for detail retrieval. It does not hide obvious details, but depending on the particular track and instruments therein, you might have a hard time hearing subtle details. In the gamut of detailed headphones and IEMs, I would say that the DN3 is probably about average. While your experience will be different when you use alternative ear tips, that won't change the fundamental limits of the DN3. In other words, you won't magically transform the DN3 into a detail monster just because you switch to spin fits or other silicone ear tips. When I speak of detail retrieval, I like to use a quantitative test. For me, that involves listening to the song New Light by Kazuki. This track has layers of details, including the sound of children playing, wind, rustling of grass, synth, piano, and footsteps. I count the number of footsteps I can hear in the first 60 seconds. The Blonde BL03 presents 5 to 6 footsteps. The Tin Hi-Fi T2 presents 8 footsteps. 
The T2 Plus and Blonde BL05 present seven footsteps. The Heidi's MS2 presents nine footsteps. The Moondrop Starfield presents six. The Moondrop Aria presents seven. The The Audio Legacy 2 provides six to seven footsteps. The Moondrop Quartz provide five to six footsteps. And the DN3 provides seven footsteps. This test was performed as with all the previous ones while using the base ear tips. Your experience will be a little different when using alternative ear tips. Regardless, it is evident that the DN3 provides about average detail. Soundstage will be different depending on the ear tips you use and how deeply you insert them into your ear canal. Further, the original recording will have a major impact on the soundstage experience. The silicone ear tips that come with the DN3 do provide wider soundstage than the foam ear tips, and that's usually how it goes. But the DN3 does not provide a particularly wide soundstage. It is, as with the detail rendition, about average. This is neither good nor bad, it simply is. For the sake of comparison, let's talk about soundstage of other IEMs. The Tin Hi-Fi T2 has above average soundstage. The Heidi's MS2 is similar to the T2 in this regard. The Blonde BL03 and 05S are average at best and perhaps slightly below average in soundstage depending on proper fit. The Starfield, Aria, and Quarks are average. If you use foam ear tips on the DN3, your soundstage will be similar to that of the Blonde BL03 with its stock ear tips. If you use silicone ear tips with the DN3, then your soundstage experience will be a little wider, similar to that of the Aria and Quarks. It's a little difficult to summarize the stock tuning of an IEM when it comes with multiple types of ear tips. Which ear tips are the stock tuning of this IEM? Is it the bass, vocal, or foam ear tips? I conducted my test using the bass ear tips. I summarized my impressions of all the ear tips early in this video and chose the bass ear tips as they seem to be the middle ground among the three variants. So for the lack of a better starting point, the bass ear tips are the ones I will use to describe the tuning of the DN3. The DN3 has an emphasized bass. Mid bass is elevated a little more than sub bass. Both sub bass and mid bass tend to melt, creating about average decay at best and average clarity in this region. The bass does tend to bleed a little bit into the mids. The mids are slightly forward, but close to neutral, I think. There is a marginal emphasis to female vocals and no emphasis that I could pick up regarding male vocals. Instruments seem to have correct timbre and average decay and clarity. Vocals were typically one to two steps ahead of instruments. In some tracks, the bass does tend to rival vocals for presence, but it never really overshadows vocals. Trouble is fairly gentle with what appears to be a slight roll off at the upper end. Even at high volumes, treble instruments do not sound harsh or piercing, in my opinion. Clarity in the treble region is about average. Detailed retrieval and soundstage is, again, average. In my opinion, using the bass ear tips, the DN3 seems to have an S-shaped sound signature. In other words, elevated bass, close to neutral mids with vocals that are not pushed or shouty, and close to neutral treble that has a roll-off at the upper range. Change ear tips on the DN3 and you'll get a slightly different experience. Push the ear tips further into your ears or pull them out a little bit and some of this will change. While the DN3 does nothing exceptional, does not excel in any technical aspect, it does its job competently. You may want more or less of something in the sound signature, but I don't think the overall performance and signature will offend most people. I think it's important to compare products as often as possible. That way you have a better idea of where everything fits. After all, today's hyped product will be forgotten in tomorrow's newest exciting review. I decided to compare the DN3 to several IEMs. This includes the Moondrop Quarks and Aria and the Tin Hi-Fi T2. I use stock accessories for all IEMs except for the DN3. On the DN3, the only thing I altered was that I switched to a spare set of MMCX cable so that I had all IEMs connected using 3.5mm jacks. I connected each IEM to a passive AB switch. That switch was connected to my RME ADI2 deck and Modi Liquid Spark stack. I listened to my test playlist on Amazon Music HD. Of course, I tried to volume match. On the DN3, I used the stock bass ear tips. The corks have closer to neutral bass rendition compared to the DN3. Going back and forth, there's a distinct feeling that the corks have a bass roll-off in comparison. The truth is that the corks don't have the bass emphasis of the DN3. 
Base clarity is greater on the quarks. Separation of sub-base from mid-base is also greater on the quarks. Decay is similar on both IMs. Mid-base impact is harder on the DN3. The mids are closer to neutral on the quarks. Vocal sibilance is neutral on the quarks while it is slightly emphasized on the DN3. Vocals are a little clearer on the quarks. Mid-centric instruments seem to have the same timbre on both products. However, the quarks are generally clearer, providing a little bit more separation among instruments. Treble energy is similar between the DN3 and the quarks. The DN3 might have a marginally greater roll-off in the upper treble area, but it's a little hard to tell. Clarity is about the same. The DN3 has a little bit more detailed retrieval when bass is not heavily involved in a track. Both IEMs have about the same soundstage. The Aria and DN3 seem to have very similar bass response. However, I think that the Aria sub-bass is marginally more emphasized, but this is probably splitting close hairs if you ask me. Separation of sub-bass from mid-bass is hard to distinguish, but the DN3 might be slightly better at it. Mid-bass slam is marginally harder on the DN3. Clarity in the bass region is about the same. The mid response is also similar, but there is a bit of a difference. I think that the Aria has slightly more emphasis of vocal sibilance and grain. The DN3 has a little bit more bass bleed into the mids region. This results in marginally greater separation of mid-centric instruments on the Aria. Timbre of instruments is the same, however. Treble response is different. The Aria seems to have a bit more emphasis in the mid treble region and closer to neutral rendition in the upper treble region. In contrast, the DN3 has what appears to be close to neutral treble until the upper treble area, at which point there seems to be a slight roll off. Clarity is marginally greater on the Aria. Separation is very similar, but the Aria usually presents a little bit more of it. Detail retrieval and soundstage is similar between both IEMs. The T2 has a bass roll-off compared to the DN3. In fact, it has a bass roll-off compared to the Moondrop Aria and Quarks and a lot of other IEMs. Compared to the DN3, the T2 has greater separation of sub-bass from mid-bass and faster transients. Mid-bass impact is harder on the DN3. Clarity is noticeably greater on the T2. The mids are also different between these IEMs. The T2 has greater emphasis in sibilance. It's a noticeable departure from the DN3's presentation. Vocals stand out more in a mix with the T2 and are typically two steps ahead of instruments. The DN3, in comparison, has less clarity and mid-centric instruments tend to melt among each other on the DN3. Trouble once again is different on these IMs. The T2 has a greater trouble push than the DN3. While the DN3 appears to have a fairly neutral rendition until a roll-off in the upper trouble region, the T2 has a slight emphasis starting in the mid trouble region and a noticeable emphasis in the upper trouble region. Clarity, separation, and detail is greater on the T2 in the trouble area. The T2 has greater detail retrieval and wider soundstage. My favorite part of a review is doing comparisons. Nothing puts a scrutinizing spotlight on the hype like direct AB comparisons. As far as the DN3 is concerned, it has a different sound signature than all the IMs against which I compared it, but it does not in any way outshine any in technicalities. All four IMs provide different ways of experiencing your music, and that's about it. For example, the Quarks are as neutral a pair of IMs as I have heard, especially under $100. The Aria is a warm sounding IM with a bit of attention to vocals and treble. The T2 provides clarity, detail, and soundstage, but this comes at the cost of bass and some sibilance and treble emphasis. The DN3 has a sound signature that is closest to that of the Aria. It's not the same, just similar. The DN3's bass emphasis is a little bit greater than that of the Aria, its vocal presentation is slightly less clear, and its treble rendition is moderately rolled off at the upper end. As with any product, you may like or hate any or all of these IMs. What I think is important and impressive is that you can get a wide range of sound signatures and performance well under $100. I started getting into IMs only a few years ago. Before then, I dabbled in some expensive stuff, mostly from Shure and Monster. Yeah, you heard me right. I used to have IEMs from an established audiophile and professional brand, Shure, and from the original king of marketing fluff, Monster. About two years ago, I decided to slowly get back into the IEM game. 
Over the last few years, I've bought IEMs from Campfire Audio, Noble Audio, Fio, Blonde, Final Audio, Meze, Audio Technica, and a bunch of chi fi stuff. My IEM collection is starting to rival my headphones. If there's anything I've learned about IEMs, it's that you can get some really good quality options under $100. Yes, I'm sure a lot of people would be happy with more expensive products and products from hyped brands like Campfire Audio and Fio, but I don't think everyone needs to go down that route. The PGVP DN3 is the upper end of a sub $100 market. It's the same price as the Moondrop Aria. The Aria is an IEM that I was fairly impressed with. It has good build, good accessories, good comfort, and a sound signature that is hard to distinguish from the more expensive Starfield. But there are other options, such as from Tin Hi Fi, Heidi's, and Ibazo, among many others, that offer something for a wide swath of audiophiles. So, where does the DN3 fit in? This brings us to value. Yeah, I think the DN3 is in fact value. You get a lot for your money. This IEM has sturdy build, a decent cable, though it could use some improvement, plentiful ear tips that, depending on which versions you use, will provide slightly different sound signatures. Unlike some Chi-Fi IEMs under $100, the DN3 does not have an aggressive V-shaped sound, much to my satisfaction. Instead, the DN3 tends to exhibit a bass emphasis, close to neutral mids, and a trouble response that is slightly rolled off. The DN3 has average detail and soundstage, and it's got average comfort. Compared to some alternatives, the DN3 has a warm sound signature with fairly smooth rendition throughout the frequency range. While it does not exactly mimic the sound of the Aria, the DN3 does lean heavily towards that type of sound signature. This begs the question, between the Aria and the DN3, which IEM stands above the other? As far as sound quality is concerned, that is a personal preference. You might love one, both, or neither. But as technicalities are concerned, and by technicalities I mean detail, soundstage, clarity, separation, and placement, both the DN3 and ARIA perform very similarly. What I think sets these IEMs apart from each other is what's included in their boxes. The DN3 has the ear tip options. The ARIA has a better quality cable and a carrying case. If you're in the market for a warm sounding, fairly smooth and intimate IEM, then the DN3 is a good option. If you want something similar, but with a bit more vocal push, then the ARIA might be your cup of tea. If, however, you want a neutral sound, then the $13 Quarks is a bargain that's yet unmatched. If you want clarity, soundstage, and detail, then the Tinhafi T2 and T2 Plus will provide those technicalities. So, frankly, you've got plenty of good options under $100. The DN3 happens to be one of them.